Hey, right, I've, I've struggled to get enough motorcycle footage together for this video, so you'll have to put up with some car footage. Um, it's the best I can do. Sorry, just pretend it's a motorcycle. Now, they say that 90% of engine wear or engine damage, which is what it really is, occurs during cold startup. Um, that's a little bit misleading, really, because it's not just cold startup of an internal combustion engine. It's what you do for the next few minutes after you've started the motorcycle or motor car up that determines exactly how much damage is caused. And there are ways of mitigating it. You can't dial it out completely, but you can reduce the amount of damage or wear that occurs. Now, I'm sure that when most people have crossed a modern road bridge, you realize that there's like a little seam, a little gap, either at each end of the bridge, um, you know, if it's not a particularly big one, Although, if it's a really large bridge that's built in sections, there will often be an expansion gap every, you know, 50 or 100 feet. There's a reason for that. The main structure of these bridges nowadays is steel or iron, and those expansion gaps are there to stop the bridge from basically tearing itself apart due to um, thermal expansion. In cold weather, those gaps will be at their largest, and in hot weather, they'll almost close up and if those gaps weren't there because of the enormous forces and pressures created by expansion and contraction eventually metal fatigue would set in and the bridge would be useless after just a few decades and designers and manufacturers of internal combustion engines have exactly the same issues to contend with an internal combustion engine has to be designed and built so that it works optimally at its normal operating temperatures which are quite high far higher than you know any bridge would normally have to contend with so if they built all the internal components of that engine so there were an exact fit at normal ambient temperatures as that engine warmed up it would seize and probably destroy itself so everything has to be made so that it's slightly undersized and of course the idea behind this is that once the engine reaches its optimal operating temperature all those components have expanded so that they're a perfect fit this obviously means that when the engine is cold just after you've started it up there's a lot of slack and play in all of those components that causes abnormal wear it causes damage until the engine heats up to its normal temperature when that calms down and one of the big issues with this of course is that a lot of those internal components are made from different alloys and metals that all expand and contract at different rates so this is a a major balancing act that engine manufacturers have to overcome and it's a chaotic and damaging experience for the engine until it reaches normal operating temperature now that's one set of problems to deal with but there are two other sets of problems that an engine has to deal with as well on startup it goes through a very short period of oil starvation until oil pressures are built up and the oil is circulating around the entire engine and then on top of that when the oil is cold it's much thicker and stickier than when it's at normal operating temperature so it doesn't lubricate as well which again contributes to accelerated engine wear and i'm afraid it doesn't stop there when the engine's cold fuel doesn't combust properly water vapor or condensation that's got into the engine through the breather tube when the bike hasn't been in use will condense and it will mix with the oil which contaminates and degrades your oil then on top of that unspent fuel because the engine isn't burning cleanly along with a whole list of corrosive and damaging contaminants end up getting into your exhaust system and clog up your catalytic converter and this not only leads to a reduction in performance and fuel efficiency eventually it'll lead to you having to replace some of these components prematurely so what you need to do to reduce engine damage as much as possible is get the engine and the engine oil up to temperature as quickly as possible whilst putting as little load on the engine as is possible and i should point out it doesn't matter if you live in a hot country or a cold country these factors come into play with every internal combustion engine 
Now, over the years, I've encountered various sort of schools of thought as to how you should go about this. Uh, the first is that you start the engine up and you let it run for, I don't know, 5, 10, even 15 minutes for the engine to warm up. Actually, this is the least efficient way of doing it, allowing the bike to idle. The engine is only ticking over at low revs, which means it's producing comparatively very little heat. So it will take much longer for the engine and the engine oil to warm up. Also, don't forget with exhaust fumes, about 13% of exhaust fumes are water. And you're dumping that into a cold exhaust system and catalytic converter, which is a recipe for disaster. And because we're talking about a very slow warm-up time, those components in your engine that need to thermally expand are going to take a lot longer to do that. So they're going to be subject to, you know, that chaotic process for much longer than is desirable. You're also producing more opportunity for moisture in the engine casing itself to incorporate with the oil, contaminating your oil. So that's not the way to go. The, the possibilities are you're going to actually cause more engine damage than if you just got on the bike and ride it. Now, the other school of thought is that you start the engine up, you jump on board, and you redline it everywhere so that you're heating the engine up as quickly as possible. But don't forget, you've got all those chaotic forces at play when the engine is cold so although you may get the engine and the engine oil hot quickly you're causing a lot of damage while you're achieving that so here's what i suggest you do if you want to make your engine last as long as possible with minimum expensive maintenance costs first of all all engines are a little bit different so what i suggest you do is you get your handbook out and you make note of the initial running procedure for your motorcycle. You know, the first three or 500 miles before its first service. Usually it'll be somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 revs, as, as I say, depending on the make and manufacture of the engine. Those values are chosen by the motorcycle manufacturer because, you know, when the engine's new and the mating surfaces all haven't quite mated together properly yet, just like they haven't when the engine is cold, it will allow the engine to run without causing too much damage. Now you've got that revs per minute figure sort of etched in your brain. When it comes to riding your bike and starting it from cold, do this. Start the engine up and allow it to run for a few seconds. Allow the oil pressure light to go out if it has one. But most importantly, listen to what the engine does. Most engine management systems now will rev the bike fairly high for a few seconds, then they'll reduce it slightly, then eventually the uh, tick over speed will drop down to its normal tick over value then you can put it into gear and set off now one of the reasons we don't allow the bike to idle is because obviously the gearbox has the same issues to overcome from a cold start those parts need to heat up and expand so that your gearbox is functioning optimally so it's best if you do it all together rather than allowing the bike to idle i mean there's no point warming your engine up and then setting off with a cold gearbox uh, you're gonna wear your gearbox out prematurely you may as well look after the whole unit as one now it's entirely up to you um how long you do this for but i would say you should do it for a minimum of the first five minutes of your ride adhere to those initial braking revs per minute that you you know you, you've read from your handbook so if it says for the first 300 or 500 miles don't exceed three and a half thousand revs that's what you should do for the first five minutes of riding your bike you're putting the engine under load but you're not putting it under uh, excessive load and you should do something else as well hang on to your gears a little bit longer than you would normally do don't change up prematurely now the reason for this I'll, I'll use the piston and the cylinder as an example but actually this is very relevant for various other components of your bike as well the walls of your cylinder need to expand so that your cylinder effectively gets slightly smaller and your piston needs to expand so it actually gets a little bit bigger and until that happens as well as your piston being able to go up and down in a linear movement as you would normally expect it's also able to rock from side to side slightly that causes irreparable damage to your piston and cylinder walls 
Now, while these components are still reasonably cold, you're also going to lose some compression and power. It might not be that noticeable, but it does happen, which can introduce lugging that makes that sort of scenario more likely. So by hanging on to the gears a little bit longer, say an additional 500 revs, it stops you putting the engine on that load that will make lugging more likely. It allows those components to move in the correct direction that they were intended to run in without being put under a, an adverse torsional load that causes undesirable movement. Avoid hard acceleration and just, you know, accelerate steadily. I mean, you don't have to drive like an old lady, but don't rush the bike. Give it time to warm up. And if you observe this procedure from a cold startup, for at least five minutes that should mitigate a lot of the engine wear that actually normally occurs during engine warm-up it represents the best way of safely warming the bike up from a cold start now even at five minutes it won't be at optimal running temperature but the oil and the components should have warmed up enough that you can ride the bike normally now when i'm riding my classic 500 the mule as you see here when you start the bike up from cold, it always vibrates a lot for the first five minutes. And this is because all the parts haven't reached their optimal sort of expansion. And then at about five minutes, it smooths off gradually. I've never noticed it as being quite as pronounced as it is on the Classic 500 on any other motorcycle I've ever run. But, you know, this is a clear example of how... The engine is vibrating a lot because the parts haven't reached their normal working temperatures, so there's a lot of play and slack that introduces vibration to the bike until it's warmed up, and it's you know pretty much smooth as silk after that. So I just observed this ritual with the classic 500 for about the first five minutes, by which time you know everything's running as it should be. This probably doesn't completely remove any any engine damage or wear, but it should substantially reduce it. Now, other things to bear in mind: uh, avoid short journeys on your motorcycle. You know, if you're not going to go for a proper run, don't take the bike. Uh, if you've got some errands to run, but they're only short errands, save them up and do them all on the same day, so that you're getting the bike nice and hot, and you, you're running it at that sustained higher temperature for a longer period of time. Try to avoid journeys of less than 10 or 15 minutes. Now, bearing in mind everything that I've said in this video so far, uh, for you, those of you that don't ride in winter, I know it's still uh, quite a nasty habit that some people have once a week or you know once a month, whatever, going into the garage and starting the bike up for uh, five min minutes or, or 10 minutes uh, to circulate the oil and warm the engine up uh, that just causes damage it doesn't do any good whatsoever if you're laying your bike up for winter lay it up hook it up to uh, a, a battery maintainer and just leave it until spring and you can ride the bike properly seriously i've had people um approach me with problems of oil emulsification where their oil has turned into the color and consistency of clotted cream because they've been doing this all it does is mixes a lot of water up with your engine oil to the point where it can emulsify and um you know you're just wearing your engine out prematurely it does no good whatsoever Right, I really hope that I've conveyed this to people uh, correctly. It's one thing in having the sort of, um, you know, the procedure and the reasons for this procedure in your head. Getting it into words sometime is a little bit difficult, but I hope I've achieved that. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like and consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. You can help me out in other ways via my Patreon page or via PayPal donations or via the super thanks button down below. Uh, any help that you're able to provide is much appreciated. I will of course be back on Friday so until then please ride safely and I'll see you soon.